Okay, now that we have enhanced inventory turned on, we're going to look at the effects on transactions. Okay, so first I'm going to start with the purchase order. And I come in here and choose a vendor, you know, fill in the purchase order appropriately. I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead here. Do some cabinet polls. I'm going to buy 100 of them, 100 each is $3 each, okay, and hit save. All right, so purchase order created, affects demand for product, doesn't affect anything else. Now it's been a little bit of time and I'm going to go in and receive my items. Now you can do the item receipt first or you can do the bill first, either or, it doesn't matter. A couple things to note on the item receipt here, so there are no prices. Okay, so if you go in and you receive in items, it's going to receive it at the price that was on the purchase order. If for whatever reason the price changes on the bill, it will go back and update the item receipt after the fact. So you just need to be aware of that. Okay, if we're crossing over periods or anything like that, closed periods, but hopefully it won't be too far separated. Okay, so I'm going to choose my vendor, H Unlimited, and it tells me I have open purchase orders. Okay, and I'm going to select the purchase order I just created, and it says in here that I've received 100. Okay, now I can go in and change this, of course, and say I've only received 50, which is nice. And it does show me, right, my purchase order uh, number over here. And I can look at my PO, see how many are received, how many are on bills, any grayed out columns in QuickBooks. You cannot edit, they're system generated. So as of right now, I haven't saved that item receipt, so it doesn't show me anything received on here. So item receipt, I have in here 50. I do have to choose a site since I have that turned on here. Say save. Okay. Now when I go back to my purchase order, right, I have 50 received, 50 on back order, zero on bills. All right, and then when I go and enter my bill to H Unlimited, it's going to tell me I have open um, item receipts or POs. So I'm going to receive against that purchase order again or enter a bill against that purchase order. Now notice what it did is it populated for me the 50 quantity 50, right? I can put in my reference number here, all that fun stuff that we do on a bill. Now I have the opportunity to change this to 100 if I want to. I don't have to, but at least it, you know, preps me and says, hey, there were only 50 on an item receipt so far. Okay, so it's a good trigger for accounts payable to double check what the warehouse said that they received. Notice also that we have pricing on here, so if I change the pricing at all, again, it will update the item receipt's pricing. The other thing is I don't have any location on this transaction, right? Because I received it on the item receipt. So I said what site we received it into on the item receipt. The bill has nothing to do with accounts or uh, with inventory. So let's take a look at what that means, okay? So I had the bill up on the screen. If I go to uh, reports and down to transaction journal, it's going to show me what's happening behind the scenes here. All right, so I have, for this transaction, this bill, it is, let me just get rid of some of these columns. For this bill, it is crediting accounts payable, right? Accounts payable goes up. Inventory offset is debited. An inventory offset account is an other current liability account, okay? On the item receipt, if I do the same thing, I go up to, reports and down to transaction journal. I can get there also by clicking the reports tab and saying transaction journal. So on this one, get rid of some of this stuff, right? My credit is the $150 against the 88,000 $88, inventory offset account, right? So that's a wash in the inventory offset account. And then my debit, which is going to make it go up, is to my inventory asset account. Okay, so it separates out those transactions. So that means, again, I can have a bill with a date dated in the future, or maybe in the past, if you've prepaid for something, you can have those be separated, right? So you just want to be aware of that effect. Now, you will be prompted to, to have a bill and an item receipt for any bill 
That is using the items tab. Okay. So all purchase orders use items anyway. So whether it's a service item or any kind of, you have to have an item on the on the purchase order. So you would have to do an item receipt and the bill. Now that gives us a good opportunity though, because let's say, you know, the um, I don't know, the IT department decides to outsource a part of their IT setup, their server setup, right? So they create a purchase order for $5,000 and they send it out to their IT or outsourced IT professionals, okay? So then accounting gets in a bill for, let's say, $2,500 and they don't know in the system here whether or not we've actually received those services. But if you make it part of the process, that the IT department, when they've received services, they go in there and they do an item receipt, even for services, right? Because it's still a service item. We receive the service. They do an item receipt for that $2,500. That way, the accounting department knows that that's been received, right? We have received the services. It's okay to enter this bill and pay this bill.